this is Vicki Mayhew from Ardent Reflections Fine Art. Today I'm going to start to demonstrate for you how to paint one of my most popular paintings, Starry Night Over Seattle. Now I say this is one of my most popular paintings because when I did the original version it sold before I had a chance to complete it. Then, while I was still working on completing it for the person who ordered it, a second one was commissioned. Not only that, but I've sold many, many prints afterward. With each version that I paint, I make a few small changes, but the basic idea stays the same. Basically, if Van Gogh was alive today and was visiting modern-day Seattle, how would he paint it? I started off with a coat of ultramarine blue. Next, I take black and I begin to paint a shoreline along the bottom of the painting. Now, I don't paint a perfectly straight line. I intentionally curve it a little bit because the Puget Sound doesn't have very many places where the shoreline is perfectly straight. Next, I start to outline my buildings. Now, when you're outlining the buildings, you can do it one of two ways. You can use a little perspective, which I'm doing, to give the buildings sides instead of just the fronts, or you can just do a bunch of rectangles and just show the fronts of the buildings. That's up to you and based on your skill level. Either way, the perspective isn't going to be perfect, because in order to do that, you would have to create vanishing points and sketch the whole thing in with pencil. What I'm doing right now is just painting the outlines in black and later on I will fill them in. Now this is a whimsical, stylistic type of a painting. We're not trying to get it 100% realistic. Um, if we were, we would have to go into a lot more detail than what we're going into. Here you see me showing you the painting and trying to figure out what you can see and what you can't on the recording. My studio setup isn't perfect and I don't have the greatest lighting, so I was fighting with glare on the canvas. I'm still continuing to sketch this in. Now I've sped this video up, but I am showing everything. So I'm looks like I'm done sketching in the outlines there and I'm going to start filling in with black. Now I did skip a little part but that was not part of the painting. That was just when my daughter came in and was talking to me and I stopped painting. So I'm still showing you more of the painting right now. And then I'm going to go ahead and start filling it in with black. So you can see I've sped the video up considerably. I believe it's four times faster than I was actually painting. And I did this so that you wouldn't have to watch the whole process at regular speed of me just filling in black outlines on the buildings. Now, as I'm filling in with the black, I think I'll tell you a little bit more about the style that I'm doing. Like I said, this is kind of a whimsical, impressionistic style. Part of the reason is to make it simpler for beginners, because I am going to use this painting in a class. But the other thing is that Van Gogh's style was very whimsical and post-impressionistic. Um, he was starting to move toward abstract art at a time when most people were still doing fairly realistic. The Impressionist had started moving toward abstract a little bit, but they really were still very representational and very realistic. Van Gogh was still representational, but he started to abstract his subjects more. Um, he was the first one to paint a sky this way, for example, instead of painting it the way it really looked. Although, he may have actually seen it this way because he had a habit of drink drinking absinthe, and one of the side effects of absinthe is brain damage, which can, one of the effects of the brain damage is that it can cause you to see halos and wavy lines around subjects. So it's possible that his genius was in part actually due to brain damage. So now it's time to paint the Space Needle. I'm using titanium white and a very fine paintbrush, probably like a spotter. 
and I'm going to start kind of sketching in the top of the space needle. Now this is a stylized version of the space needle, it's not accurate, but it's basically constructed of three elongated ovals, uh, sort of hot dog shapes, and the middle one is the widest of them, or the longest, I guess, would be a better way to put it. And the other two are a little smaller. Um, and then you can see here that on top of the three, there's kind of a little triangle shape with a rounded top and a thin line on top making an antenna. I decided that the middle wasn't quite long enough, so I elongated it a little more. And I'm refining the shapes a little bit, you know, I mean, because it's not actually hot dog shapes on the real space needle, so I was just kind of making them a little straighter on the sides. And now I'm doing the bottom of the space needle. It starts off about the width of that lower portion of the top and then it narrows, it gets very narrow in the middle and then starts to widen out again. I apologize for my head being in the way. I'm doing my best and I need to come up with a better situation for my camera. Now here, you're not going to see it because my head gets in the way, but what I did was I decided that I needed to make that building below the space needle a little bigger so that I wouldn't have to paint in the whole bottom of the space needle. I wanted the building blocking the bottom portion. So I took black and just blacked it in. And now I'm taking a mixture of titanium white, primary yellow, and chrome orange. It's more yellow than anything else. And I'm going to start painting in the moon. So the moon on Van Gogh's Starry Night looks very... Um, much like a letter C. It's curved a lot more than what you usually really see the moon curved, and I kind of copied that with this. I'm curving it around a little more than what would you would normally see in the sky. And the problem with using yellow on top of blue is that often the blue will show through and you'll still you'll start to see a little bit of a green, and that's why I added a little titanium white, and I'll also do several coats on the moon. So here I'm going to do those two swirls you see in Van Gogh's Starry Night. And I've got a mixture of titanium white and blue. It's almost white, but not quite. It still has a little bit of blue, and I'm starting to sketch in just the general shape of the, where I want the bottom of that first swirl. And now the second swirl looks like it actually kind of takes up or sucks in part of the first one and so I put it on top and kind of made it look like the tail of the first one was going into the start of that second one and I outlined the basic shape I want this is something that you could alter you could do it the other direction you could do all kinds of little customizations on this part if you wanted I've got the basic shape of the swirls in and now I'm starting with placing the stars and here I'm using mostly yellow with a little titanium white in them and I'm just doing spots so I just was basically deciding on the placement of the stars and I put a spot where each star would be and now there's going to be a time where I go back to the buildings and put in a white outline around the edges of the buildings and this is to show you just uh, where all the edges are and so you can actually see the corners and where I made the perspective and stuff like that so I'm just going in with a gray mixed up from my black and the titanium white and I'm going over all the edges and outlining the buildings.
I know that this doesn't show that well, and I am going to turn the canvas and try to show you what I'm doing. As you can see, I'm, I'm making lines to differentiate the corners of the buildings. I'm not being perfect by any means. Some of the buildings are now looking like they're in front of other buildings, and some are behind. This one is an example if you were looking straight on the building, and you would see just a rectangle of the front. And then this one is turned a little bit that way. Um, and a lot of this, you can decide how you want it. I probably should have mentioned that I'm using the chiseled edge of a half inch flat brush for this, although I encourage you to use whatever brush works best for you. So here I'm getting ready to go back to the sky. I'm going to take some of that same color for the moon. I put a little bit more orange in it this time and I'm doing a second coat on the moon. <laughs> 